Howdy folks, I want to make a quick video to kind of give a couple horror recommendations for this Halloween season. Uh, as I'm recording this, Halloween is just over a week away, uh, and I really haven't done anything uh, kind of spooky on the channel, haven't done any Halloween stuff, had some plans, but the SAG after strike still going on, you know, kind of put a damper on those. So um, let's let's at least just set the mood just a little bit. There we go, with the absolute bare minimum of decorations, my hoppy Halloween shirt and my armadillo skeleton that I got it at home or some kind of similar store to that. Uh, but uh, I feel like uh, as much with as much horror as I watch, uh, I feel like I often want to give uh, little recommendations to people of what horror movies they should check out. And I want to kind of shy away from some of the the biggest names in film, especially with, like I mentioned before, the SAG after strikes still going on. I don't really want to like give promotion to films that, you know, are seen as struck work. So I have, I think three recommendations that I would like to give today, uh, that kind of fall into that indie, uh, two of them technically are foreign. One of them is a silent film from the twenties and one is independent, I believe put out by a 24, uh, who have been playing well with SAG after during this whole affair. So uh, I think these are all pretty, um, you know, if you want to watch something that's not as well known, not like super big film, I think these are some really, really solid recommendations. So, uh, hey, I probably piqued your interest the most with when I mentioned a silent film. Uh, that's what I want to start with today. Uh, Haxan, or released in, I think, America as just simply called The Witches, or released with the subtitle, I believe, Witchcraft Through the Ages, is a Swedish film from 1922. Uh, it... Uh, kind of presents itself as like a documentary about witchcraft through the ages like i said uh, it uh it's weird because it's it's one part like kind of documentary here's how witches were perceived here's some of the things people said they did here's some art or whatever and then there's like recreations of stuff there's like people who are witches who are like holding like satanic rituals and stuff and uh it's you know for something that's 101 years old now it's pretty cool actually uh this is one of those if you've not seen a lot of silent films before uh, I've dabbled just a little bit I've seen a handful here and there but I think this one is exceptional um, you would think oh it was the 20s they probably don't get away with 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 much it's just all pretty tame probably this film has by far my favorite depiction of the devil in film it's just like a big shirtless hairy guy with horns who keeps going like eh, eh, or something with his tongue it's hilarious and wonderful and just people's you know the silent film kind of reactions that uh, uh people have uh are very present in this uh it's lovely it's a great film and uh another reason why i want to start with this one is because it is easily the easiest to come across as it is so old it's in the public domain you can find several channels on youtube that have the full movie uh uploaded uh in fact if you look at the description of this video uh, i have a link to what i think is the best quality one uh, the one i believed i watched the other year when i watched this for the first time uh it looks really good i pulled it up earlier uh, it looks better than some of the other uh uh versions that are here on youtube um so, hey, you have literally no reason to not check this one out uh, because it's it's right here, free, accessible to you right now. Uh, and, hey, I think everyone should experience some silent film here and there. Um, of course, the easiest recommendation would be Nosferatu, but I feel like that's one that, like, everybody at least knows about. Even if they haven't seen it, they've probably seen that Spongebob episode with a... The, the hash slinging slasher uh, where at the end it was just uh, Count Orlock from Nosferatu flipping the lights on and off and they're just like... Nosferatu and as a kid I had no idea what that was but you know with the advent of the internet information's easy to find out you can find out what was up with that ending of that Spongebob episode oh it's a silent film from the 20s vampire movie uh, Nosferatu is also very good also public domain probably can be found on YouTube as well uh, but the recommendation I want to give here is Haksan because it's it's really very good uh, it's a very enjoyable watch uh, and like I said great devil Great stuff, and uh, especially if you've never seen any kind of silent films, this is an easy gateway one to start with. Next up, the second film I want to talk about today is The Black Coat's Daughter, which is an independent film that I believe came out in 2015 and got picked up for distribution around 2017-ish, so kind of that mid-2010s kind of era there. Uh, the film is directed by Oz Perkins, who is the son of Anthony Perkins, probably best known for his leading role in the film Psycho from 1960. Uh, and this is, for a while, when people would ask me for horror recommendations, I would always give a bunch and then would throw this one there and say that it's my hipster favorite uh, because it's a film that I really haven't 
seen a lot of people talk about. Uh, I first heard about it from uh, the Red Letter Media guys as they were kind of going over their film recaps one year and it was mentioned and it came up on Netflix some years ago. I don't think it's on Netflix right now, um, but I saw it. I was like, oh, I remember that got recommended. And then I watched it and it blew my mind. It was really, really good. Uh, This one easily falls within the uh, kind of, I guess, I guess you would call it demonic possession, uh, ritual killings kind of genre Uh, but there's two kind of storylines that go here one is uh this guy is traveling with uh i believe and it's been a couple years since i've seen this so forgive me uh if i get some of the details wrong uh one guy is traveling the the countryside uh in winter kind of with um an escaped like mental institution uh patient uh and the other is this girl who who's father didn't pick her up for uh from some private school for the winter break uh and it's kind of stuck there i think i think it's a catholic school and they're stuck with kind of like the nuns and the um the father who um the padre who's there Uh, i think there's two students who are there and kind of creepy stuff starts to happen so there's kind of two storylines that split and um they do eventually like kind of you figure out like what they have to do with each other Uh, i won't give any spoilers for that kind of stuff Uh, but it's one of those films that just like you know, like I said, I watched this film probably like four or five years ago at this point, and I still think about it a lot. Um, anything that you can think of that uh, that other kind of mainstream films tackle, whether it be possessions, killings, uh, creepy stuff happening, like uh, it, these are some of the things that people kind of point to what's wrong with horror films. Like, oh, like the new Exorcist movie, they're like, oh, it's another one of those. Of course, I know how that's going to go. And it got received very, very poorly. Uh, this film does all of those kind of tropes and things. Uh, some of the best I've ever seen in a film. It's very atmospheric. It's a very slow burn kind of movie. It's not like balls to the wall for the entire runtime or anything, uh, but it's a kind of a slower paced, a more thoughtful one. And it's, man, it's good. The payoff at the end is like still like just chilling thinking about uh, how well executed it is and how much it makes sense uh, if you kind of like you know just kind of think about it for a little bit uh, so it's I don't really want to go into too much more detail than that I feel like I said a lot more about Hexan just because you know it's older there's less kind of to spoil so to speak um, but uh, hey I can almost guarantee you that you will not be disappointed with the Black Coat's Daughter uh, so check it out if you can find it like I said I saw it years ago on Netflix Uh, And I don't think it's there, but I believe it did get picked up by A24. So wherever A24 stuff can be found, maybe you can find this one. There's a couple streaming services that I don't have access to. Maybe try your luck there. Uh, But hey, certainly if it's one you can find, if it's something you can rent for kind of cheap, definitely check it out. Highly, highly recommend it. And the third recommendation I want to give today is a Japanese film that came out in 2017. Uh, called One Cut of the Dead, or I, I'm not going to try to pronounce uh, the original Japanese name, but it roughly, what it's called in Japanese roughly translates to Don't Stop the Camera. Um, I saw this one on Shudder a couple years ago, so I think it's probably still there. Uh, being a Japanese film, I don't really know like how it's being distributed here in the States or anything like that, but uh, One Cut of the Dead it's what it's, is what is known as internationally. Uh, this is another film that I don't want to give too many details about, uh, but I can give you the basic premise here. Uh, and then just kind of talk about some of my thoughts about it. But it's basically a film crew is out making a zombie movie uh, when an actual zombie outbreak happens. So that hopefully that one little one sentence hook is enough to kind of get you interested. Uh, but just know that it's it's very, very good. Um, kind of the way it feels is that uh, it has one of the, I will say it has one of the best third acts I've ever seen in a film before. Like I was literally like fist pumping, like getting hype here in my chair, just sitting watching it on my computer. Uh, It's, it's really fantastic stuff. Uh, The third act almost plays out like a heist movie, almost just kind of the way it feels and the way it's paced and everything like that. It's very, very good. And it's one of those movies where like kind of weird stuff happens in the first act. And you're kind of just like, well, that was kind of weird. Why, why did that happen like that? And you just don't really, understand it until the end and it all clicks and it all makes sense everything falls into place and it's just like one honestly one of the most satisfying movies i've ever seen it was a really easy pull open letterbox and immediately give it a five stars and just be like this was incredible i loved it um and if you're kind of squeamish on horror in general it's not too too horrific uh even i just pulled it up on wikipedia just to get a couple dates right and everything uh it's listed on there as a as a zombie comedy film uh i don't know if i'd necessarily go so far as to call it a comedy uh, but it's the least horror 
film of these three. Um, I would recommend it to a wider audience than I would people looking for just horror movies because it's one of the movies that's just a really good movie in its own right. Um, super satisfying, like I said, uh, especially like given the whole film crew kind of stuff. If you're just interested in the making of movies, uh, it kind of delves into that a little bit. And it's just kind of like, you know, it's one of those movies that like a filmmaker is making this and they're like, oh, this is like this is like the movie where I just want to get it all out there and do the whole thing. And it's just like. Mm, just like it, it just oozes fun creativity and just like good filmmaking and it, it's just like I said it's just super satisfying and I don't want to give any more details than that because like I don't want to spoil like some of the big kind of overarching things about the movie just leaving you with that one tagline of a film crew making a zombie film experiences a real zombie outbreak hopefully that's enough hopefully I sold you on it hopefully I sold you on all three of these um that's kind of all I want to say about these uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I want you to experience these films on your own so if you've seen any or all of these three uh how do you how do you feel about these are these good recommendations do you feel um and also if you have any other recommendations uh, I'm always looking for new horror stuff to watch uh especially anything newer I feel like in the last couple of years I've kind of missed out on some of the um I don't want to say bigger movies but kind of the, like the bigger indie movies right because uh, those are some some of my favorite horror films to watch so as i'll leave your uh, uh recommendations for horror stuff in the comments below i would love to read those let me know what you think of these three uh and especially if you hadn't seen any of these and you do go out and watch any of them come back and let me know what you thought of them i would really like to hear uh if my recommendations worked out for you so that's about all i got today uh thank you for watching uh go enjoy some horror stuff happy halloween and i'll catch you later with something else take easy